Matthew 8, 16. If you want to turn there. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were, that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits. Now get a hold of this. He cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. But that's the key part there. He cast out the spirits with his word. Post and mid-trib, they worship Satan. They're looking for Satan. What does the word do? Cast them out. Proves, them that, proves that they're worshiping a fake God. That's why Satan hates this book. Uh, eternal security. People who teach you have to do works to be saved. What does the word do? It casts them out. Trinity versus the Godhead. What does the book do for the Trinity people? It casts them out. That's why Satan hates God's word. That's why he wants to take you away from God's word and distract you and get you away from it as much as possible. Brethren, I keep telling you, stay in the Word of God. Um, Mark 8, 33. You want to turn there next? But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan. For thou savest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. Are you savoring the things that be of God? Or are you savoring things that be of men, the Trinity? Something to think about. Luke 4.8, turning to Luke 4.8. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. This is when Jesus was being tempted again. Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. I'm going to keep picking this up and showing it to brothers and sisters in Christ. It is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, the Godhead, and him only shalt you, thou serve. Do you realize Time and time and time again, when Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness, it was three times, but being tempted, that Satan tried to get him away from the Word of God. And what was Jesus? It is written. It is written. It's not Trinity, it's the Godhead. It is written. It's not three persons. There's only one person of the Godhead, Jesus Christ. It is written. These three are one, not in one, are one. It is written. Satan even tried to get Jesus away from the Word of God. He set the example for all of us. It is written. It is written. If it's not in here, you don't use it. When trying to teach the Bible, you don't go and grab words and add to Scripture and take away from Scripture. No. Another thing was, do you think Satan's going to treat you differently than he treated Jesus? Remember what Jesus said? If they hated you, uh, know that they hated me first. I know he's talking about people, but who's the God of this world? Lowercase g, Satan. Um, Satan can use anybody who's lost for his own ends. Granted, Ultimately, he needs God's permission, but he still uses lost people. 2 Corinthians 2.11 2 Corinthians 2.11 Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. What's his two devices? And there might be more, but the two main ones I'm focusing on, two devices that Satan use, uses to get you away from the Word. Right. 
remember, remember, remember. <laughs> How do you fight sin? Because I understand he tries to appeal to the flesh. The world is so wicked and vexing that it tries to appeal to your flesh and sin. But once again, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. It's through the word of God that you're able, that God will give you the strength. The Holy Spirit opens the book to you and it gives you strength to fight sin. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Uh, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Uh, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. He can try to tempt you all he, wa all he wants. If you're staying in the word, the flesh, you keep the flesh down because you're feeding the spirit. But the two ways he tries to get you away from the word, traditions of men, wisdom of this world. It's already evident so far in the word Trinity, the definition of Trinity, the wisdom of this world. I showed you Martin Luther. They keep going back saying, oh, we've used Trinity since back then, traditions of men. Those two things have been working for years and years and years to get people away from this book. All right. He also uses uh, Bible perversions, but that falls under wisdom of this world. A better rendering could be, I think we can redo the Bible and get a more accurate translation. It's all about the wisdom of this world. Colossians 2, verses 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Going through this again. And vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Traditions of men. Uh, philosophy, the wisdom of this world. Right. Rudiments of the world. The way of the world. And not after Christ. The Jesus of the Godhead, which is found in God's perfect written word. The Jesus of the Trinity is not found in God's perfect written word. Okay. Not after Christ. And I'll keep saying that. Brothers and sisters, I'm doing this with love. But yes, it upsets me, and I'm hoping it upsets you to the point where you realize, I need to stay in this book so I don't fail again. I failed the Lord because I was using the word Trinity. I was using the term God in three persons. I would say God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Did I truly believe in the Trinity? No. I believe in this book. God showed me I was wrong, I repented, and I started trying so hard to use terms that are in this book. It just starts out small. One of the words they try to say is rapture. It just starts out small. Well, rapture means caught up. I mean, it means the same thing. It's not a big deal. It's widely accepted among the body of Christ, traditions of men, wisdom of this world. So he used words that people think are innocent. Well, you know, it kind of does. To take you away from terms in the Bible to start using the wisdom of this world. Satan's not an idiot. They lie, wait, they're subtle. They start with little things, little things, little things. And what does that amount to? Now they're taking away a title for God. And replacing it with a title for a pagan God. If they'd done that from day one, nobody would have fallen for it. All these, all these Bible believers, we'd be like, we don't want nothing to do with the Trinity. We're not going to use those terms. It's not in the Bible. But it started out small, where they said, well, these few words, we can you know, replace words. And then more terms, we can replace those terms. And it's gotten bad now that God, those with us, with the Holy Spirit in our heart, God pricked our heart. Said, we're not supposed to be adding to or subtracting from the Word of God. You're not supposed to be doing it. Mark 7, 13. Next verse we're turning to. Making the word of God of none effect through your traditions, which ye have delivered, and many such likes things do ye. Now get a hold of that for a second. Making the word of God of none effect by your traditions. How many of them say, well, we use rapture, and we use this term that's not about this? <laughs> they make God's word of none effect by their traditions. Traditions of men, wisdom of this world. Using the words of man 
and then saying, you know, we've always done it. We've always done it. Have I made that mistake? Absolutely. Am I going to defend that mistake? Absolutely not. Am I going to defend that sin? Absolutely not. How many of them do defend that sin of adding to and subtracting from the Word of God? Making the Word of God of none effect by their traditions. And that's exactly what they do. The, God te the Bible teaches the Godhead, not the Trinity. But they make the Godhead of none effect because they leave, they get you to put down the Bible and go off the traditions of men and the rudiments of the world, uh, the wisdom of the world. You sit down and tell them, hey, this is the true gospel, and they don't like it. The tradition is faith alone, faith alone, faith alone. It's always been faith alone. Uh, no, no, you've got to do works. You know, you, you have to see if you can buy your salvation. I did a video on it, and they hate it. The faith alone people, they say we're works-based, but they're the ones that say they've earned their salvation by their faith. They're the ones that are works-based because they've earned it, so they take it. I've earned it, I'm taking it. They take out repentance, they take out prayer, they take out call upon the name of the Lord to save them, asking God to save you. No, I earned it with my faith, I'm taking it. I'm not saved by God's grace through faith, I'm saved by my faith through God's grace. Okay? What are they doing? They're making the Word of God by, of none effect through their traditions. You've got the people on the opposite side that believe that you have to do good works to stay saved. They look at us and say we're easy believism. True Bible believing Christians. And they think that they can merit salvation. They think they can, it's like every good works a dollar, and they think they can raise enough money that when they get to heaven, they can buy salvation. They can buy God's grace. True salvation is God's grace, God saving you. It's nothing you're doing. You are not saved. Like, I always teach the plan of salvation, repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer, and call upon the name of the Lord. All four of those is backed by God's Word. But Satan doesn't want you near God's Word. We preach the true gospel. But I always teach those four things, they do not save you. The last one calling upon the name of the Lord to save you, he looks at your heart, the first three steps, to see if your heart, so all that happens in your heart, and the third step, your heart's coming out through your voice saying, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm going to hell. I deserve to go to hell. Lord, I'm sorry for sinning against you. I believe in your Son. The finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 4. I believe that, Lord. I'm not ashamed of you. I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm a sinner. A dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner. It's your heart coming out. And then when you call upon the name of the Lord, when God saves you, that's salvation. When God saves you, His grace saves you, that's true salvation. You did not earn God's grace with repentance. You didn't earn God's grace with your belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. You didn't earn God's grace by confessing both in prayer. When you called upon the name of the Lord and God said, Yep, your heart is right, I'm going to save you. That's true salvation. And it takes faith to repent. It takes faith to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And it takes faith to confess both in prayer. But you're not saved by your faith. You're saved by God's grace. And you go through the faith to find God's grace. And call upon the name of the Lord and say, Lord, please save me. I don't deserve it. I can't save myself. Please save me. I know I'm going off on a tangent a little bit, but... These people that always teach false gospels, they go away from the Word of God. They subtract from the Word of God. They ignore verses. They try to explain ver away verses. They twist Scripture. Okay? And it's just, if you're not saved, get saved. If someone's watching this that's lost, get saved. Go to Jesus in that state. Repent, believe, call upon the name of the Lord to save you. Or confess both in prayer, call upon the name of the Lord to save you. Time is running out. 1 Corinthians 1.20 
Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made the foolish the wisdom of this world? Brothers and sisters in Christ, when we get to heaven, there will be none of these people down here, the, world, the, the wisdom of the world, these wise men of the world, these scribes, you know, disputer of this world. We won't have to put up with them anymore. And right now, when you, as a Bible believer, have the Holy Spirit in your heart, and you read this book, and you study this book, you'll look at the wise, you'll look at the scribes, and you'll look at the disputers of this world, and you'll say, Lord, you just show me these guys are fools. And once again, I'm going to throw this out there when it comes to the Trinity. What did God call atheists? A fool has said in his heart there is no God. He makes, through his word, God, right here, made foolish the wisdom of this world. He makes the Trinity people look like fools. The uh, post and mid trib people look like fools. Uh, works based salvation, easy believism, and works to be saved, they make them look like fools. God made foolish the wisdom of this world. But if Satan can pull you away from this book, God, you can't find out if that person's foolish. The wisdom of that person, if it's right or not. If he can take this out of your hands, or if he can get you to look the other way, distract you, get you away from the book just for long enough, the wise men are going to deceive you. The scribes are going to deceive you. The disputers of this world are going to deceive you. I made a noise as she thinks that someone's at the door. 1 Corinthians 2.6. We want to turn to 1 Corinthians 2.6. This was supposed to be a short study, and I'm just letting you guys know my heart, and I care about the brothers and sisters in Christ. Stick to the Godhead. Only use words that are in the Bible. All they have to do is change one word. They changed the word R to N, and they made a mess of the Godhead. They got us to change the word R to N, because I've made that mistake. And they made, they, they made us turn the Godhead into a mess. Okay. 1 Corinthians 2, 6. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. We're supposed to be wisdom among them that are perfect. It comes back to not casting your pearls before swine, brothers and sisters in Christ. We speak wisdom among brothers and sisters in Christ. We have the Holy Spirit in us. We have a perfect heart with the Lord. We want to know the truth. We want to be servants of God. He's our master, he's our lord, he's our king. He tells us what to do. And being perfect in the sight of God means having your heart right with the Lord. So we speak wisdom among brothers and sisters in Christ. And I've said it before, when you come across somebody and you're trying to with your heart, with love, and you're saying, Listen, brother, because you think they're a brother or sister in Christ, and you're like, I was deceived by the Trinity, using the terms in the Trinity and Trinity. Let me show you what the Bible says. And you get to a point where you realize they hate the Godhead, they hate the Jesus of the Bible, and they love their Trinity. You don't cast pearls before swine. You are not to speak wisdom among the lost world. You only speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Talk about the heart. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Not in the flesh, but in the heart. 1 Corinthians 3.19 For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Do you want to be one of those people that are trying to use the wisdom of the world? Have God take you in, in your own craftiness? Make a fool of you? I don't. I want to make sure that I line up with the Bible. 
2 Corinthians 1.12 For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity, simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world, and more abundantly to you, word. Okay, going back to wisdom of the world, um, how do we speak wisdom among, uh, gosh, I say it right, among them that are perfect, brothers and sisters in Christ. But the point that I want to point out says, not with fleshly wisdom. I remember we talked about at the beginning of the study, remember what I said, the number one people that defend the Trinity are the ones that are against the true biblical salvation, repentance towards God. Okay? They don't want to call upon the name of the Lord because in order to do that, they have to take the sin that's in their, their heart, the iniquity that's in their heart. That King David said, if I, that my, if I hide my iniquity in my heart, I'm paraphrasing, God will not hear me. So they have to take that iniquity, that sin, and throw it at the foot of the cross so then they can say, Lord, save me. But the number one people that defend the Trinity, they don't want to give up their sin. They hate the changed life. They don't want the changed life. That's fleshly wisdom. They think that worldly wisdom, fleshly wisdom, I can just do, make up my own Christianity and say it's only belief, it's only belief. That's fleshly wisdom. When your flesh leads you and tries to tempt you, oh, it's no big deal. It's not that big of a deal. If you stay in the book and you get tempted and you'll stop and say, uh, that's fleshly wisdom. That, that's dumb. That temptation that came in, that makes no sense. Uh, I'm supposed to abstain from all appearance of evil. Um, I'm not supposed to conform to this world. You know, you have all God's Word in your heart, so that temptation comes in, you see it as fleshly wisdom when your flesh starts tempting you. The number one people that defend the Trinity, it's all about them being able to keep their sin. Catholic Church, you can buy indulgences. You can go in there and say, Father, forgive me. I'm talking about priests, not God. And, okay, you're forgiven. Just say a few Hail Marys and throw some money in the plate, and you're forgiven. You can go back out and sin again. That's what it's all about. All right. Don't fall for the fleshly wisdom of this world. 1 Thessalonians 2.18. Turn to 1 Thessalonians 2.18. Wherefore we would have, wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan, but Satan hindered us. Now, Satan can use false converts. He can use the lost world. He can whisper, if you remember my last study, he can whisper into your ear. Him and his demons can whisper something into your ear to try to entice the flesh, to sow seeds of doubt. But bottom line, his whole purpose for a Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian man or woman is to hinder you. To hinder you in any way possible. And the number one way he's going to be successful in it, if he gets you away from the Word. And when he gets you away from the Word, your flesh takes over. And when your flesh takes over, you realize that your prayer life suffers. Almost becomes non-existent. Your walk with the Lord comes to a complete stop. It all starts with him getting you away from the Word. Don't let him do that. 1 Timothy 5.15 For some are already turned aside after Satan. And I understand the context of this, um, but the point is, is how many, when it says turned aside, it meant that they were on the path. I'm using this for instruction of righteousness. They're on the path, but they turned aside after Satan. Oh, maybe I can do this sin. Maybe I can take my eyes off the Word of God. Flesh starts taking over. Oh, you can just go to this side, or you can go to that side. Remember, as a Christian, you come to a stop, and you can start hurting yourself with the flesh. You can start doing things. 
All the Trinity means the same thing as the Godhead. Turning aside after Satan. Anybody who's truly born again, Bible believing, Holy Spirit in their heart, this Bible, God's perfect written word is their final authority, it's their foundation, knows that Satan's behind the Trinity. How many have turned aside after Satan? How many people have fallen away? More and more every day. That's why I look, to, I look up and I look at the clouds and I'm like, um, or I look into the sky even on a cloudless day, I'm like, Lord, is today the day? Am I ready for you to come back today? I see how bad it is, Lord. People, Bible-believing Christians are falling away. There's so many false converts. The world's out of control, just like you said it would. Just like the Lord said it would. Are you coming back soon? John 8, 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. Remember we talked about it. Number one people that stand for the Trinity are the ones that love their sin and don't want to give it up. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. There is no truth in the Trinity, people. Brothers and sisters in Christ, there is no truth in it at all. They'll twist scripture. They'll change definition of words. They'll ignore scripture. They'll add to scripture like crazy. There's no truth in the Trinity. And anybody who defends the Trinity, they have so-called Christian ministries, and they defend the Trinity, the truth is not in him. If they've looked at all, the Holy Spirit's not in them. That's the truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, he will be in us. Okay? Because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. See, many when Jesus was here were full of devils. Okay? Jesus, remember we talked about it, Jesus was casting them out with his word. You want the truth in you? Get saved. You need the Holy Spirit in you to have truth in you. Do I make mistakes? Yes. Am I learning? Yes. Does God correct me? Does the Holy Spirit through the Holy Spirit and chastening? Yes. Do I have brothers and sisters in Christ chasing me? Yes. But I have a love of the truth. I have the truth in me. The Holy Spirit. Get saved. And those who are saved that are falling away, you need to stop ignoring the Holy Spirit. You need to stop taking your eyes off this. God's perfect written word. Luke 9, 1. Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to, and to cure diseases. I put down here, the Trinity people have no power and authority over devils because they hang out and worship them. Okay. Who gave them power and authority over the devils and to cure diseases? Jesus did. People of the Trinity, Jesus isn't their Lord. Jesus isn't their King. Jesus isn't their Master. They're worshiping Satan. They have no authority over devils because they hang out and worship them. Sorry about that. The battery went dead on me. Mark 5.15 And they come to Jesus... The, uh, the setting for this is, you remember when Jesus and his disciples, they went across the lake, there was a guy that came out of the tomb, naked, scratching himself, and he had tons of demons, I'm hoping I'm using the right one, but he had tons of demons in him, and God cast it, Jesus with his word, cast them out, and put them into swine, and they ran down the hillside and basically committed suicide, all the pigs did. Swineherders went to town, told them about it, and they came back, and this is where we're at. And they, and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with devils and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. 
Do you know that if you stay in this book, that you're going to be in your right mind? You defend the Godhead. You defend eternal security. Dispensational teaching. You defend the King James Bible as God's perfect written word in English. You defend the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ, being caught up. When you stay in this book, you're going to be in your right mind. You stray from this book, you're not. You stay in this book, you're going to be in your right mind. And you know what? The people that go against all those things, they're going to be afraid of you. How many times have you come across somebody and they thought you were ignorant? And they started telling you, well, you know, the uh, pre-time, uh, the pre-tribulation rapture, and you, you, and you don't say nothing, you don't correct them yet, it's false, you know. And they start going through and they try and make a mess of the Bible, they're adding to the Bible, and they're preying on your ignorance. And you let them, and as soon as they stop, you look at them and you go, it's actually a proper term in the King James Bible, God's perfect written word in English, is the time of Jacob's trouble. And Jacob is another word for Israel, so that seven year time period is for Israel, not the church. And they'll look at you like, uh-oh, this guy's not an idiot. This guy's not a chump. And they are afraid. How many times you have Mormons come to your door and you start, I've got the Mormon book now with some papes, I'm going there, but you guys believe this and you guys believe that, cause, and they'll be like, oh, well, thank you, bye-bye. Joe's witness, same way. Why? They're afraid of you because you're in your right mind. You're going to come across that a lot in your, in your life, but the only way you're going to be able to be in your right mind is if you stay in the Word of God. Now, you know these Trinity people are afraid of you because those that stand for the Godhead are in their right mind. Why, do you, why then do you think they get so mad at you and attack you personally, try so hard to get you away from the Word of God, using terms that aren't in the Bible, changing definition of words, so they can get their Trinity to deceive people into thinking their Trinity actually works when it doesn't? Stay in your right mind. Stick with the Godhead and words used in the King James Bible. Where you find God's perfect written word, the King James Bible for English speaking people. There's other languages out there that line up with the King James Bible. They're just as much God's perfect written word as the King James Bible is. But where do you find the word of God in the King James Bible or another language that's the equivalent of the King James Bible? I want to leave you with Deuteronomy 32.31. For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. Their rock, the Trinity, lowercase r, is not like our rock, capital R. Their rock that says you can lose your salvation is not like our rock, capital R rock. Their rock that's going to make you go through the time of Jacob's trouble is not like our capital R rock that promised us through his word to take us home before that time period. And I could go on. Their lowercase r rock, Satan, is not like our rock, capital R rock, Jesus Christ, who is God. There is only but one God, the Father. You say Jesus isn't the Father, you're saying he's not God. Well, he's God, but he's not the Father. Then you're saying he's a false God. Because there's only one capital G, God the Father. I leave this with you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Stay in the Word of God. Do not change the Word of God. We learned here one simple word was changed and it made a mess of things. The word in was, was put in here to replace the word are. These three are one. Not in one, our one. Their rock is not like our rock. Stick to the Godhead. Stick for absolute, absolute truth. Stay in this book, the King James Bible. We're not going to understand it completely until Jesus comes back and gets us. But God will show you amazing things in this book if you believe it and you stay in it and you live it. Your heart is perfect with God. Lord, 
I want to trust you. I want to believe you. I have a love of the truth. Show me, Lord. Open this book to me. I'm doing my best to live my life according to your word. My heart is for you. I want to please you. Not the traditions of men and not the wisdom of this world. Not my flesh. Uh, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ and my love for you, brothers and sisters in Christ, in Christ Jesus be with you. See you in the next video.